Hello and welcome back to Bleeding Blue, an exciting episode today that we have for all of you. Happy Memorial Day. Um, if you're hanging out in the live chat, thanks for being here. Hope you're enjoying the Memorial Day weekend and enjoying uh, being off. Um, Snacks, welcome back. We have a very fun interview today. I, I think this is one of the first interviews that we've really had that I think really does distinguish us. I think as us as a Giants history show, I think we distinguish ourselves enough. But I think this episode and this kind of interview distinguishes us even more. We had Al Alex Zeldin on. You may have never heard of him, but who he is. He is a executive producer. He is a, he's a TV producer. He's a writer. He's a creator. He uh, is currently an executive producer and writer at French Mustache, and he previously worked at Funny or Die. Snacks, tell us exactly like who Alex Zeldin is, why we're having him on briefly. Yeah, I got to tell you, Justin, first of all, I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. Um, second of all, this was... I mean, we, we had LPG, we had Clem on here, and those were phenomenal interviews, but this is so unique and different where he wrote he wrote a complete pilot episode for a show that revolves around Tiki Barber, Scumbag Quitter, and Ron Dane. And he made them into, it, it was almost, it was a comedy act, and he put brought in Jeremy Shockey and Trey Junkin and Jim Fossil. It is so very, very cool that we were able to kind of get behind the, the mastermind of what he put together and um, a lot of great insight from a, a great writer and you guys will be able to read it. We'll link it and everything. Yeah. Um, so it, it was all very, very cool. And honestly, I just, I'm not gonna lie. That was one of my favorite bleeding blue episodes. Yeah, I agree. So we're going to put the script and the pilot that Alex Zeldin wrote, it's going to be in the show notes. It's going to be in the description. It's going to be, you know, wherever, wherever you listen or wherever you watch, it will be in the description slash show notes. So you can read along with us, or if you want to wait till afterwards to read, if you want to pause the episode and then read it, I don't really know. I don't really care, but I really think that Giants fans, Giants fans should read this pilot. That's on, you know, a crime fighting duo of Ron Dane and Tiki Barber. I mean, I think that's kind of really cool. It's so niche too. I think what, what makes bleeding blue so great is that this is a niche show and this is exactly what this episode is. So Alex Zeldin, enjoy. Here's our conversation. All right. Welcome back to the show. We kind of gave a little bit of an introduction to who we're having on in the beginning, but we want to welcome on Alex Zeldin, who is an executive producer, a writer, a creator, a very funny guy. He has worked on projects such as Billy on the Street, Everybody's Crazy But Us, Decides Honest Trailers, and he's currently an executive producer and writer at French Mustache and previously worked with Funny or Die. So Alex Zeldin, thank you for coming on. Um, Thanks for having me thanks for the intro that's that's my whole life in a nutshell right there oh, i love it i love it how are you doing welcome welcome to bleeding blue i'm doing great i'm um visiting my sister uh who lives and teaches at this awesome boarding school in north carolina called arthur morgan school so shout out ams uh and i'm in the library right now so hence the beautiful background the couch and no books i guess yeah <laughs> Well, that's great. I, I will say, I mentioned it before we, we came on, you're wearing a, a wonderful shirt. Thank you. And you, you, me and Justin are stuck in New Jersey with this awful weather. And I'm literally recording while hearing you guys and listening to the rain drop on my air conditioner on the <laughs> one weekend of the year, the one weekend of the year where Mother Nature we deserve good weather on Memorial Day weekend. And the one weekend we a year, after months, a year and a half of torture, mm -hmm. we get rain and 50-degree weather on Memorial Day weekend. It's disgusting, but I will say, Alex, it's great to have you. Thank you so much for coming here. This is an unbelievable story that we cannot – Literally, we, we've been waiting on this for, for how long, Justin? We, we, since, know. like, free agency and the draft. So this is, first off, speaking of rain. So Alex and Snacks, both of you have you have great sets of hair. Snacks, you are not okay. revealing your hair. Wow. I mean, it still looks great. I don't care what anybody says. It's, it still looks great. Is it? Does the rain have any impact on, on the hair? I, I think that's a thing. Does it have it? I, 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 I can't speak to it. Does it have any impact on the hair? Alex, how about you? Any impact yeah, on the hair? I mean, this is the longest my hair has ever been. This was a COVID, you know, process. And I know once I cut it short, I'm never going to grow it this long again. But every day is an adventure. Sometimes it frizzes. Sometimes it doesn't. 
I live in LA, I'm in North Carolina right now. So I'm just seeing it react differently kind of no matter where I go. So yeah, it does. All right, right Snacks, we found our third podcast that's going to be called Talking Hair. But Alex, so I want you to kind of give us a little bit of an introduction on kind of why you're here, you know, why you kind of like approached us as, as a show for you to come on and share such a, share such an awesome story and awesome script. So share like what exactly we're going to be talking about today and what exactly we're going to be doing. And, you know, maybe even a little bit about your, yourself as well, other than the intro I kind of gave at the beginning. Yeah, for sure. So um, I live in LA. I'm a TV writer. And part of being a TV writer is like, you're constantly writing pilots for a couple of reasons. One, you just want to show that you know how to write, uh, but you also kind of want to show what your imagination is, who you are, that you can create characters and all this stuff. And it got to be time for me to write another pilot. And I met with a TV writer and he said, you should write the Alex Zeldin version of Master of None. Create a fictional version of yourself so we get to know who you are. And I started doing that and I just, I hated it. I hated doing it. It was not fun. Um, I don't want to see myself on TV. And as that was happening on the radio, that song Thunder by Imagine Dragons was playing, you know, thunder, feel the thunder, lightning and the thunder, thunder. And I thought that sounds like the theme song to a show about Tiki Barber and Ron Dane solving crimes. (laughs) And then I said, yeah, I got to write that show. I don't care if it's not going to get me work. If me and my friend Jeff are the only two people who ever read it. I have to write this show. So I wrote that show. Um, It exists sort of purely as a sample and uh, it's gotten me some meetings and I'll talk about that later, but really it's, it's for Giants fans. It's for people who loved the Giants in the early 2000s, like I did. And, um, you know, because I don't think it's ever going to be on TV. I just want people to know about it and to read it if they're interested and uh, to drop me a line. Well, I, I will I will say, um, as a Giants fan, one that yeah. you speak of, yeah, I'm probably the most normal, sane Giants fan anybody will ever meet. Justin, you can attest to that, right? No, it's that's that's not true. Please don't lie to our guests on our on our show. Yeah, you're right. I'm actually a sadistic fuck. But um, <laughs> anyway, uh, that that whole I I couldn't wait to hear like the background of why you created it and the fact that like just the song kind of sparked your interest in that Mm -hmm. and then you're like okay this is this is for giants fans because everybody knows thunder and lightning ron dane tiki barber and you know everybody knows the the kind of the bust label on ron ron dane and they know the greatness of the running back that wore number 21 scumbag Uh quitter and a a collection of all that together is so cool that you found a way to creatively make it hysterical and sorry shit on tiki barber like you did like it was so it was so perfectly done and i i really can't wait for for everybody to read this and um i know giants fans are going to absolutely love it and appreciate it and endure it and i'm sure not this monday like what we're doing right now but Mm -hmm. next week we're going to get comments as we watch our show talking about that script and how much they loved it so just an unbelievable job Thank you. I do want to preface, these are fictional versions of Tiki and Ron. These are not my personal opinions of them. Um, but yeah, you know, I pulled, I pulled from reality, right? So when I thought of this idea, it's like, okay, so who are the comedic versions of Tiki and Ron that could be interesting? And as, you know, Snacks, I'm sure has mentioned multiple times, um, you know, Tiki was... For a long time, he was the best running back in Giants history. Probably is. Statistically, he holds all the records. Mm -hmm. Um, He retired when he still had some time left. And the year he retired, the next year, uh, he had some words about Eli that the fans did not like. And um, the Giants won a Super Bowl without him. Um, And so I thought, like, okay, so what's a comedic take on that? And I thought what would be really funny is if Tiki was just full of himself, bitter that he never got to win a Super Bowl, had an inferiority complex, and everyone hated him. Um, so I, I sort of ran with that and created sort of a fictional character off of that. And then I thought, who is the sidekick to that character? And I thought, someone who is just beloved. And you know, Ron had that bust label 
uh, with the Giants, but he is beloved in Wisconsin. He's the mm-hmm. best Badgers mm-hmm. running back of all time, 246 yards in the, in the Rose Bowl. I mean, it's amazing. So wherever Ron goes, the Wisconsin fans follow him and they love him and that irks Tiki. So in this universe, there's tons of Wisconsin fans for some reason. And then, you know, the fictional Tiki being this sort of, you know, full of himself, tries to sound smart, Ron is just like this big, lovable, dumb kid uh, (laughs) who everyone loves and everything just goes his way. So this is not a commentary on who Tiki and Ron are as people. I don't know them personally. I try to remove, you know, the humans from the players that we that we watch. Um, But that was my comedic take on the situation. But ultimately why I feel people connect with it so well is because then you have jerks like snacks that are able to make those inferences that you are yeah. ha- saying that Tiki Barber is like this full of himself person. So really, I, I, even, I even make this note. Yes. All right. Thank you, snacks. Yeah, I even made this note about just the dynamic between, you know, Tiki Barber, Ron Day. And again, these guys are their, their crime fight. This is a crime fighting duo, this mm-hmm. pilot, basically. Mm-hmm. Um and we'll get to the, I, I want to ask you about the story actually next and kind of have you just run with it and tell us yeah. kind of like the story in kind of a little bit of a nutshell. Yeah. But the biggest point of this in terms of Tiki Barber's character development in this like 30 page, <laughs> this 30 page pilot, which Tiki <laughs> Barber does have a bit of a character development here. I have, it's Tiki Bar, and this, what, this is how it connects to his real life in my opinion. <laughs> you don't have to agree with it. Tiki Barber's constant search for affirmation and support in all of the wrong places, which I think that is exactly how Tiki Barber has like lived his retirement life, like just looking for affirmation and Mm -hmm. looking for support, accepting kind of like some of the wrong places and saying the wrong thing. And I think this script kind of perfectly kind of uh, flirts with that. So tell us about the story and kind of I'll let you run with the whole script and what exactly your pilot is about and your vision for Ron Dane, Tiki Barber and some other awesome characters that are included. Yeah, for sure. So once I had those characters and I had this pro and I had, um, you know, the premise of the show down, I thought, okay, what's a good jumping in point and what world is this grounded in? So I thought like, I, I got to get all the other giants in somehow. Um, so we start and I want it to be like, where could we actually find people in real life before the story just becomes bonkers? Um, so it starts at a fan fest and Tiki and Ron are doing, are signing autographs. Uh, Thunder and Lightning is there. The line for Ron is this huge party atmosphere. All the Wisconsin fans are there. They love him. Tiki is short. And the first line in the script is a a kid says, uh, how come people like Ron better than you? (laughs) And Tiki says, I don't have it in front of me, but I think it's, people don't like Ron better than me. Wisconsin fans like Ron because he was, great in college but a total bust in the nfl i carried that team Mm -hmm. uh and i also hosted the today show so who should i make this out i hate to interrupt but that i Uh, I cracked up when when that line came in i and i hosted the today show that was so funny yeah and uh when tiki looks back to the kid the kid is gone and ron is giving him a piggyback ride (laughs) so that was that's the character dynamic from the start um Great longtime backup quarterback Tim Rattay uh, is not able to attend his autograph session. Tiki thinks that's weird because it's not like Tim Rattay to miss uh, an autograph session. Again, fictional. I don't know what Tim Rattay is like in real life. Um, but it turns out that two guys were basically trying to kidnap him. Um, Tiki and Ron get called to, and, and Tiki and Ron stop them. And because of that, they get called to the sheriff's office to, for questioning. Turns out the sheriff is Jim Fossil, um, the, you know, their coach for all of the time they were there, except the last year. Um, and Jim Fossil in, insists that he's not bitter that he was fired from football, but he's very bitter that he got fired from football uh, from the Giants and never got another coaching job. Um, so he moved to Santa Clara and ran for sheriff. Um, from there, it turns out that this was not an isolated incident. Someone is kidnapping mediocre football players from the early 2000s. Uh, he wants Tiki and Ron to go undercover at the Kerry Collins Golf Invitational, which helps former players transition to life after football, not a real foundation. Um, and then, you know, from there, uh, I'll jump ahead to the end. They investigate, and it turns out 
that the person behind this all is Trey Junkin. Um, and if you know who Trey Junkin is, you'll that's who the audience it is. It gives for. me the ske- it, Alex, it gives me the skeeves thinking about Trey Junkin. Me too. Me too. It gives me um, the skeeves. Yeah. So Trey Junkin has kidnapped the 2002 Giants, the 2002 uh, San Francisco 49ers, and he wants them to replay that wild card game until he gets the snap right because he's been tortured by the fact that he blew that snap. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll say this about that game. That was the hardest Giants loss I think I ever witnessed because the 2000 Super Bowl, the Ravens were a great team. We were outmatched. That 2002 Giants was a special team. They gelled right at the end. Um, they were killing the Niners and they just fell apart. Uh, so I figured who is the, the ultimate villain uh, in this era of the Giants? It's, uh, it's Trey Junkin. Um, and that's sort of the story. That, to me, you could not have picked a better villain for it than Trey mm-hmm. Junkin. And I love that you say that that's like the, the worst loss that you felt. Because I agree with the 2000 Super Bowl, Super Bowl 34, where we just got our, our asses waxed with the Ravens. Yeah. That was a very good team. Ray Lewis should have been in jail for murder, but we don't talk about that. It, it still was it was a very – that was the worst loss for me ever. Mm-hmm. And I was nine years old. And mm-hmm. I, I remember every single play, everything distinctly, yeah, like in front of my face, yeah. how much I remember all of that. And yeah. I never can like Philly, the the miracle at the Meadowlands part two with Deshaun Jackson was yeah. brutal. Yeah. This was this was a playoff game, and this was for a team that, yeah. like you said, got hot at the right time yeah. and was very good. They could have made a run. Yeah. And the fact that the defense blows the 24 point lead. Yeah. And Trey Junkin literally on a what, what was it like a thirty five yard field goal? Yeah. It wasn't even long. Yeah, you just botch it like that, and everything yeah. goes to shit in two yeah. seconds. Yeah, nauseating, nauseating. And you know, I try to find the humanity in all these characters. And you might kill me for saying this, but like my heart kind of breaks for Trey Junkin. He played twenty years in the NFL. He did. And if you play for that long, you're doing something right. And if you're a long snapper, no one should know your name because you only get your name known when you do stuff like this. So he comes out of retirement for this one game and he blows it. He, you know, 50, however many guys are on a team, 53 men can't go to the Super Bowl because of his mess up. And, um, you know, again, fictional show. What's the craziest version of that? 20 years later, he's a psychopath and he's kidnapping people because he's never been able to move on from it. And that's sort of the theme of the pilot. And that's that's so creative in, in your sense of taking a character that is literally hated mm-hmm. by every giant fan in the world. Yeah. And then turning him into that. It, it, it is so funny to me. And you make such a great point about the long snapper. The only reason they their name gets brought up as if something does bad. That's why Zach Diossi was a captain for 12 years. Yeah. Never did anything bad. Yeah. Um, Yeah. There were a couple of times where I'd look at the roster and be like, Zach Diossi still on the team. That's how you know you're a good long snapper. Exactly. Exactly. So the fact that you were able to, to make Trey Junkin into the character you did is just phenomenal. And then at the end, at the end of it, he does become like a a, a sympathetic figure. Yeah. Yeah. The fact that, both Tiki and Ron have like this reflecting moment of even Tiki says, you know, we, we all do in terms of putting the past behind you. We yeah. all do. Besides you can't blame yourself for that loss. You weren't part of the defense that blew a 24 point lead. You weren't the ref who missed the penalty. I believe that was, wasn't that rich Soybert that they should have called the um, pass interference on mm-hmm. after they it should have been offsetting penalties because of pass and interference it it. and yep. ineligible man downfield. So what a botch was- you know what actually would have happened is Matt Bryant would have missed that field goal. <laughs> and then uh, he wouldn't have had like a 20 year career. Cause Matt Bryant was very shaky that whole season. I he think- was and his whole career is pretty shaky too. Yeah. So I don't know if, if that snap goes well, maybe Matt Bryant misses and he never plays football again. Matt Allen, the holder punter, never played football after that game. One season in the NFL, he was done. I got You know, it's so funny you brought that up because I was going to bring it up real quick about Matt Allen, mm-hmm. who was, like you said, the punter and the holder. It's funny. It's funny to me that there are two giant players who played like one year in the league, Matt Dodge and Matt Allen. They have yeah. the same name. Yeah. They had the same fate. 
where yeah. everybody fucking hates them and they yeah. never play it again. Mm-hmm. I, I mm-hmm. guarantee you, I guarantee you they are selling real estate in like <laughs> suburban Idaho right now because no one wants to look at them. No one gives a shit about their opinion. But that's the funny part to me. Matt Allen's very forgotten in that. Like he was Completely the holder. Forgot. It was third down. He could have thrown the ball out of bounds. And, 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 sorry, Justin, real quick. Okay. But against the 49ers in 2011, mm-hmm. there was a bad snap by Diossi, and Steve Weatherford picked it up off the ground. Lawrence Tyne still kicked it true blue. Mm-hmm. So where there's a will, there's a way. Yeah, yeah, we got that moment. It took a while, but uh, it we did. finally yes, got there. It did take a while. It did take a while. I'm sorry, Justin, go ahead. No, it's okay. And one of the other the most interesting characters in this script, I think, behind Tiki Barber, Ron Dane, is Jeremy Shockey. And the next <laughs> line that Tiki says in that part, and you weren't the tight end who dropped a touchdown earlier in the game that would have won it for us. Tiki turns, reveals Jeremy Shockey standing by the door. Tiki, Ron, Coach Fossil, and Trey uh, Junket, they all glare at Jeremy. Jeremy Shockey says, whatever, I'm still friends with Kid Rock. <laughs> so I think the, the how you paint Jeremy Shockey, I mean, I, I'm, I will say you can, you can feel free to disagree with me. You paint Jeremy Shockey in this script kind of like a dick. And I don't think that is off based for his character. Your your thoughts on on kind of how you kind of painted Jeremy Shockey in this? Again, all fictional. Um, yes, yeah, of, but, course, of course, of course, of course. Um, but all of this was around who is going to irk Tiki Barber. Um, so when they go to the Carrie Collins Foundation Trust Invitational, um, he sees Jeremy Shockey. And he's like schmoozing with a bunch of former players and, and Shockey is bragging about how many businesses he has and how he's friends with Kid Rock. And Tiki Barber says, um, Jeremy Shockey, it's great to see another three-time pro bowler here. And Shockey says, more like a four-time pro bowler and two-time Super Bowl champion. Hope you, what is the line? Hope you, um, hope you something better than you hold on to the football. Yeah. And yeah, he, he, and he knocks his drink right out of his yeah. hand. And Tiki, um, he looks at, uh, he, he pulls out his notebook and he writes Jeremy Shockey under the list of suspects of people who are <laughs> kidnapping uh, former players. So, you know, it's just like, who would piss off Tiki? Someone who has more Super Bowls. I mean, who has won the Super Bowl twice, although he was injured that, you know, 07 season, but that's a different conversation and made the Pro Bowl more times. Um, there's a clip you can look for it when Shockey was uh, going to the Super Bowl uh, with the Saints, um, Tiki interviewed him, and Shockey made a dig about like holding on to the football. Uh, and I think I saw that clip, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna make a heightened version of of this guy. Wait, 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 really? Yeah, it exists. Go to YouTube, search like Jeremy Austin. Shockey, Tiki Barber, foot uh, Super Bowl or something like that. No way. All it. right, so so this is maybe a little off topic because I, I, I want to get to the actual plot line, the story of everything. Yeah. Um, but I legitimately despise Tiki it's, Barber. I have it. Right I know. Here. You gonna, have it. I'm going to, I'm going to include it in the, in the, in the video. Yeah. Right. Beautiful, beautiful. I legitimately despise Tiki Barber. I think uh, he really? is. Yeah, really. <laughs> I think he's the worst human being that has ever graced God's green earth. By far. I think he's a quitting scumbag that nobody should ever appreciate, giant fan or not. I think he's 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 dirt. He's li- He's been dead to me for, what, 12 years now? Dead to me. And I used to worship that man. However, I had to get that get that off my chest. Um, but can I can I just transition real quick a little outside of the of the the pilot and the, the script and everything? Like you're a giant fan, yeah, right. So yeah. how did that all come about? Like your upbringing and everything like that. Like for me and Justin, like we're from New Jersey. Our dads yeah. were diehard giant fans. Like we yeah. were just born into this and everything yeah. like that. You're a giant fan so much, you know about the history of Tiki yeah. and, and everybody and all these guys. So I, yeah. I, I would love to hear about like, you know, how you, how it all became, how it all became for you. And if you still follow the team as religiously as you do and, yeah. and all of that. 
Totally. So I'm actually from DC originally, uh, born and raised throughout my entire childhood, but my dad's from New York. So he raised me as a Giants fan, as a Knicks fan, as a Rangers fan, as a Yankees fan. And when I was, so I loved all four of those teams. When I was really little, uh, the Knicks were my number one team. I loved Patrick Ewing. Yeah, I see the hat. There we go. Whoa, 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 you got to show the hair. There we go. Now let's see the hat. <laughs> <laughs> Bada boom, um, baby. But when they traded Patrick Ewing, that was it. I, I think I screamed and cried so loud I woke everyone up in the house. I was little. Um, but after that, I was like, okay, I need a new number one team. And um, growing up in D.C., that's such a football town. And being the out-of-town Giants fan in Washington was such a fun role to play That's cool. as a kid. So I think 2000 was the first season I followed it religiously and a great season to come in. They were not expected to be good. They had just changed their uniforms um, and they made a Super Bowl run. So I was, I was hooked. Um, two years later, Trey Junkin. Uh, and then, you know, watching that team from, I'd say 2000 up until the Super Bowl in 2008, it was a team that like every year you were like, they could win it. They have, there's so much talent on this mm -hmm. team. And if they just don't make stupid mistakes, was it, who was the guy against the Titans? I think in 06. Uh, uh, defense, yeah. Kiwanuka who yeah. like had Vince Young wrapped up and just let him go. And that's what being a Giants fan was. It was seeing this team who was like, if they can just make a run, they will do it. And then my senior year of high school was the year they won the first Super Bowl against New England. And it was like the greatest sports gasm of all time. And it was, it was exactly what I was saying. Like that team, they were talented. They just had to make a run and they made a run and they beat, you know, arguably the greatest team of all time. Um, and I'm still a fan now, but I will say this, and don't kill me for saying this. That moment was so good that the next season when I started watching, I was like, it's never going to get better than that. You'll, ne you'll never reach that climax again. I'll never reach. It's like you beat Mario and then like you're going to play <laughs> Mario again, you know? Right. So I still love the Giants. I still watch them. I enjoyed watching them a lot during the pandemic. Same kind of thing. You know, we were a couple of plays had gone different. We would have won 10 games. So Easily, it's fun yeah. to like... It's fun to now be back sort of – this team is kind of similar to the early two Giants the, – the early Eli years of the mm -hmm. Giants, right? Yeah. Danny is showing promise. There's some talent there. They got a new coach. So it's a fun time to, like, really get back into them. That's, I feel like, that's a great point. That's a great point. I'm sorry, Justin. You, you got it all. It, it literally is very similar. Danny's in his third year. He's got his big body receiver like they got with Plaxico for Eli. New coach. Second mm -hmm. year, everything kind of, kind of comes together. Go ahead, Justin. I feel like, Snacks, have you ever heard of the phrase sportsgasm? No, I never did, but I can <laughs> promise you right now, Alex, I'm, I'm taking that. Take it. <laughs> I'm taking it. I'll credit you, but I'm taking it. <laughs> no, that's, that's, that's incredible. So what, yeah. so what we're going to do, uh -huh. Alex, I have one more question for you, but what we're yeah. going to do um, as we kind of wrap up the – entire script i mean if a, a lot mm -hmm. of people check show notes and episode notes and descriptions anyway but mm -hmm. we're gonna find a way to get this script some way on whether it's the talking giants website Great. somewhere where you can click a link and you can read the entire script so maybe as you're watching while as you're listening you can follow along so you can check out or even if you haven't checked it out yet look in the description of this episode show notes episode notes wh whatever kind of you're listening on and then that'll be where the the show is so I, this is kind of going to be snacks. You may have another question wrap up, but this is at least my mm -hmm. final question. Thank you so much for coming on, Alex. Thanks for having me. If you, so you were obviously, you know, you were not writing, producing TV shows, uh, you know, when you, during like the two, the early two thousands, you know, you graduated right. high school, you know, when the giants won their first Super Bowl. So if you were older yeah, and you wrote this and you wrote yeah. this while the giants were kind of prominent, like 2000, 2001, 2002, yeah. Yeah. Well, obviously you wouldn't be writing this in 2001, but you know, 2002, you wrote this. I mean, if off, I was a psychic, the, the, the off season of 2002, if you had a time yeah. machine, yeah. would you pitch this number one mm -hmm. and number two, do you think that this would realistically actually get picked up if you did pitch it? <sighs> Great questions. Um, I think that, yeah, maybe I would have pitched it then um, if it was really top of mind for people now. I mean, it's so ridiculous 
Um, I think it could work as an animated show. And I mm. tried to write it in a way that if you didn't follow, if you're not a football fan, you can still follow along. And it's the story is still sound and all of that kind of stuff. Um, and I would love for it to get picked up. I told you at the beginning, like if only me and my friend Jeff or the people who ever read this, J Jeff and I text ideas back and or I text him ideas really um, <laughs> for like future episodes. Um, I just, I think there's so much legs to these characters, but what I've accepted is that this script is, is for Giants fans. It is for people who loved that team as much as I did. And at this point, um, I don't want to try to waste time like pitching it or whatever. No one's ever going to steal this idea. So I'd rather it be on the internet. I'd rather Giants fans who want to read it, get a shot at it. And, um, you know, if there's one listener who is a diehard Giants fan, who's also a showrunner or a TV producer, who is just wants to meet with me, you know, that would be, I'd say a home run, but uh, it's a touchdown is probably the more appropriate term here. No, that to the touchdown. Very, very great save there. So this was, this was, I, I still can't get over the fact that like you, you knew going in, you're like, all right, whatever, this, this is not going to be picked up and with your profession mm -hmm. and to, to think that, and then to go on and write 30 pages of a pilot yeah. is, is just baffling to me in, in a good way. Like I, mm -hmm. I couldn't respect that more if I tried. Uh -huh. And I mean, talking giants, Justin, tell me if I'm wrong. It's like, 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. There, there's going to be plenty of people that are about to read this. So, you, you know, it's an animated version. Yeah. Or even how about this? We'll see. Here's a, here, here's a, here's a concept that I feel like a, a ton of people would love. Uh -huh. People love Joe Judge. Yeah. And as the legacy and the story of Joe Judge grows more, mm. I think – bringing and especially if the giants win something and if they do something maybe not even a super bowl you know but if mm -hmm. they just start to become relevant again fuck that you know mm -hmm. all right all right e easy Sorry. easy Sorry. you know but the, the whole joe judge in the mud type of deal and you know i, I this the story and the allure of judge is going to grow more you know that he's a tough nose hard nose guy but also mm -hmm. knows to have a how to have a lot of fun so i'm rooting for you alex and i'm rooting for that brain you and jeff if you guys exchange ideas <laughs> together i'm rooting for you guys to you know to, to come up with something and then actually it can be pitched and you know we can enjoy it in, in real time but regardless nevertheless you know thunder and lightning ron dane tiki barber as a crime fighting duo and uh even, even there's even there's even a storyline that we didn't even get a chance to talk about I, I would the the dynamic between aaron andrews and pam oliver is hilarious <laughs> that, that absolutely is true. hilarious yep. and fictional all fictional, fictional. All fi <laughs> he got a preface by saying all fictional <laughs> and and the you know and then how even tiki barber fictionally uh has a crush on pam oliver so all of those things are some of those things that we didn't even touch on like i said i yeah. hope everybody can check it out so um snacks uh, do you have any any other final final thoughts Final thoughts. No, I, I really, first of all, Alex, thank you very much for coming out. Me and Justin have talked about this script literally since you sent it. And um, when I read it months back, I was like, yeah, we can easily make an episode out of this mm -hmm. and let's, let's try and bring Alex on because it would be even better. And the fact that it's so good and so funny and just so relevant to our kind of show where it's a lot of old school giant fans and everything, and they're mm -hmm. going to know everything that's going on. Is, is so much better. And then all the backstory behind it today that you gave us, phenomenal. It, it's even better than I could have imagined. So <laughs> thank, you, so thank you very, very, very much. Thank you. I got to say one thing. You can cut this out if you want to cut it out. I got a career out here. I have nothing personal against Tiki Barber. This is all fictional, but I will say one thing about him. In his Reddit AMA, he didn't ask me anything on Reddit, and he said that he doesn't think the Giants would have won a Super Bowl if he stayed. So maybe that is a little redemptive in some way. You know, mm. maybe it all worked out for the best. Um, wow. All right. So, so you know, you, for so... me at least, uh, it it helped create this script, and you know, Trey Junkin helped create the script. So there was a lot of closure as a Giants fan in writing this script. Justin, give me give me twenty seconds, real quick. I'll okay. give you twenty seconds. Or so just Tiki, Tiki said if he was on the team in 2007, they wouldn't beat the Patriots. What a fucking scumbag. Oh, of my course, God. Of course he's saying that, Justin. Why wouldn't he say that now? You... Of course he's saying that. What? 
What a conniving little prick Tiki Barber is. Are you kidding me? He's trying to get in good graces on on the giant. Fuck that. Fuck that. Fuck him. Alex does not hold any of those feelings. Sna- that pissed something. me off so much. Alex, Alex you- I'm, I'm really glad you told me that, Alex. I'm really glad because now I hate him even more. Alex, you glad that you came on? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. This was so much fun. Um, you know, there's a reason I reached out to you guys and not any other podcast because I felt this was the, the perfect place to talk about it. And I'm just so happy you guys read it and liked it. it Alex Zeldin, thank you so much for coming on. Us. Yes. Thank you so much for coming on. Um, this is, this has been a joy to talk about. It was a joy to read. I'm probably going to read it um, once or twice a year, just to refresh myself whenever I'm feeling down and I want to laugh. Um, this is what I'm going to go to. So I'm excited for Giants fans to kind of get this in their hands or, you know, get this, uh, get this in front of their eyes as they're scrolling. So thank you so much for coming on. And um, we'll, uh, we'll plug, we'll plug some of your, or no, how about this? Not, I, we won't even plug it. Pl- plug yourself. Where, where can we find you? Where, where do you want people to go to find what you're doing right now? You know, they can just go to my Twitter at Alex Zeldin. Um, I'll open up my DMS and if people want to drop me a line, they can. Um, from there, there's like links to my website and you can find everything uh, about me uh, either through Twitter or through Google. Um, but yeah, you know, really I'm, I'm here to connect with other Giants fans at the end of the day. So, you know, if this struck a chord with you in some way, uh, please let me know. That would make them really happy. All right. Thank you so much, Alex. Take care. Thanks again. Thank Appreciate you, Alex. It. Have a good one. All right. Thanks to Alex for coming on. I think that was a lot of fun. Again, go to the show notes if you want to read and if you want to uh, follow. If you, I'll, I'll even include Alex Zeldin's, you know, uh, his Twitter handle in the show notes as well. I'll include that Twitter link. So if you want to go give him a follow, he said he's going to open up his DMs. If you want to, sh- uh, if you want to, you know, chat with them, say I really enjoyed it. That would really mean a lot. That would mean yeah. a lot. If you can, yeah. if you all can go DM him, if he does open his DMs or even just tweet at him. If you don't even have to DM him, tweet at him and say, "Hey, I really enjoyed your script. I really enjoyed you coming on Bleeding Blue." That is my ask to all of you. We don't ask, we don't ask anything. We don't ask you to like the video. We don't ask you to leave a five star rating Apple podcast app. You know, do that because that would be uh, really cool. So thanks to Alex for coming on. Snacks, I think we're going to try to get some more interviews. I think that's what we're going to try to do. Yes. And uh, apparently we have, we have a few in the running right now. So things are looking very bright for Bleeding Blue. We're having a good time. We're doing innovative, unique things that nobody else is doing on a giant podcast because. You know, there's only one podcast in Giants history that talks about uh, the Giants history. Giants history. Yeah. So, um, no, this this is all well and really good. And please give Alex your love. That was that was a great interview, and I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as we did. So, give him give him his love. Give him a follow. Tell him what you think about the script. And like Justin said, we don't ask for shit. Literally for shit. Maybe in the in the in the comments section on Monday when it's a premiere, we ask you to like the video. That's it. Not here. You don't have to do anything. Just go appreciate Alex's hard work and the beautiful script that he wrote. So uh, we appreciate you guys. And Justin, I have just two words to say before I say no more words after. All right. Well, I'm gonna say keep on bleeding blue and snacks. Fuck Tiki Barber. <laughs>